Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about the Windows user interface. This comes from our a Essentials exam, 220-701, section 3.2 where we need to understand a lot of the different aspects of the Windows UI, especially Windows Explorer, My Computer, Control Panel, Network Places, etc., etc. We're going to step through each one of these. I'll give you a feel for what you can expect to see, whether you're sitting down in front of Windows 2000, Windows XP, or Windows Vista, all of these different components very similar across all of those operating systems. Let's go on a tour of our Windows desktop, and we're going to learn about some of these things we were looking at that we need to understand about the Windows user interface. This is a Windows XP desktop that I'm running on my machine. And I've got all kinds of different aspects of here. I, I can see there's already some icons on my screen. Down here is a button that says Start. It's even if I mouse over it, it says Click Here to Begin. Then on the right side are a few small icons. Let's start at the top of our list, and we'll work our way down. First thing on our list is Windows Explorer. If I right mouse click on Start, you can see there's an option here to explore. If I click that, it pops up this uh, very, very common type of environment, very uh, common type of the user interface that shows my disks and my folders on one side, and it shows files on the other. This is Windows Explorer. This is not to be confused with Internet Explorer, which is also a Windows, a Microsoft product. And that is a browser that allows you to surf on the web. When we say Windows Explorer, we're referring to this file management front end that allows you to have access to the way files look and what you can do with network connections. But primarily, people use this to see what's on their hard drive. So if you wanted to click on Favorites, you can see all your favorite shortcuts. If you go to My Documents, you might have music or pictures that you might have in any of these folders. And just by clicking on the folder, you can then drill down into what happens to be stored on the hard drive. So this is a great way to go about finding out what's on your computer, browsing for different documents that you've created, looking through movies that you might have or pictures that you might have on your system. And this Windows Explorer allows you to move around and do that. Now at the top of this screen, you'll notice there's a My Computer. I'm going to click that in my Windows Explorer. This is exactly the same as if I had double clicked on my computer right on the desktop. So you'll notice that these things integrate together. And very often in Windows, you can do one thing and you can repeat that process using another set of clicks from another menu and get it to exactly the same place. Very common in the Windows operating system and the Windows environment. When you go to My Computer, you see everything associated with this machine. You can see files that are stored on this computer. But probably more importantly, you can see hard disk drives and other devices that might be in this computer. Notice that I've also got on here a Windows CD-ROM that's right here as well. My A Plus Essentials CD-ROM is on this view. So you can start to see what exactly is in my CD-ROM drive, what is in my DVD-ROM drive, do I have anything that's in my USB drive right now, and your Windows Explorer allows you access to those different components. And a good example of that is when you plug in your USB drive, the USB drive pops up on this devices with removable storage. And now it becomes that drive that you have access to. So if you go to My Computer, you will always have access to that highest level view. So if you plug in a USB drive of any kind, you'll always be able to go to My Computer and figure out where that ended up. And you can always click on that icon to now access the information that's on that hard drive. We've also got in our computer something called the Control Panel. I'm going to go to the Start menu. And you'll see right off the Start menu is an option that says Control Panel. Let's click on that. And this is a list of all of these different icons that are available for configuring your system. This is a control panel that allows you, just like the name implies, control different aspects of your computer, the network connection, the way that your background looks, how does your computer use power. All of those connections are inside the control panel. If you wanted to change anything about your system, you could double click. You could see what your system is configured for. You could see the hardware options inside of your computer. You could see if automatic updates are, are configured. So these are control options that are at a very high level of how can we use our computer. And very often when you get into more specifics, especially as we get into our 702 exam requirements, we're going to spend a lot of time in the control panel because it gives us direct, at direct access to many parts of the operating system. If you ever need to access something across the network, it could be a printer, it could be a file that's stored on a central file server, it could be a, a resource that's configured on somebody else's computer, 
you would do that across the network. And I can either click on My Network Places here. I'm going to right mouse click, though, on Start and go back to our Windows Explorer. I clicked Open. And if I want to see the folders that are here, I can click Folders because I want to show you that right in here is also an icon for My Network Places. I'm going to click on that. That shows you all of the, the directories, the files, and the resources that are currently available to you across your network connection. This is a very common way to find and access different files. And because it's integrated into Explorer, it's as if those folders are on my local hard drive. And so now when I want to save a file, I just save it out to that particular machine that's across the network. And that means that anybody else on the network who has access to that same machine can also access my files. It's a great way to share information. And it's all integrated into the operating system. So your, your applications don't have to know anything about using the network. The operating system takes care of all of that for you with my network places. As we started different programs, you may have noticed across the bottom of the screen on our taskbar that for every task we started, I'm going to start Control Panel, for instance, we got a new little icon here at the bottom. If I start Google Chrome, my browser, and start it up, you'll also see an icon show up at the bottom for Google Chrome. And if I want to move between those different programs, I only need to click that little piece of the taskbar at the bottom. So that shows me what tasks are running, but it also provides me with an easy way to access those tasks as well. If I currently have the task uh, highlighted, if I click it again, it automatically minimizes it. So also another way to remove things from the screen and clear things out easily as well. On the far right side of this taskbar is something called the system tray, or the sys tray. You'll see it referred to. And this has other components that are minimized or that are running in the background, but they're not active tasks that you might connect to. For instance, right here, I can see I have a quick starter from OpenOffice.org that if I right mouse click, I can easily start a text document or a spreadsheet or a drawing just by using one of these little applets that's stored right there in my system tray. And that way it stays out of the way of my normal work environment. But anytime I want to access and run those particular programs, I can now click on that. It says, yeah, we'll start up OpenOffice.org. I'm not going to participate in the improvement program right now. And it starts up my writer program. So a very easy way to access that just because it's a little applet in the system tray. Applications have to be written specifically to be stored in the system tray for them to show up there. And Windows gives you a way to also hide different things in the system tray. If you go to the Properties, I just right mouse clicked on my taskbar, and I chose Properties. You can hide inactive icons, and you can specify what icons in the system tray would I like to hide. And depending on all the different things that you've run on your computer, you can really customize and show exactly what you want to see and when you want to see it.